The Mobile, Washington County, Choctaw Indians are getting ready to have their annual powwow, which is to take place in June. And they are here to tell us about it, give us information when it's going to be, and so that the public can come and see it and take part in it. Also, the uh, Choctaw Indians are having a now a surge in teaching their children their culture and they have a good reason for doing that. So my first guest is here, and she's the Title V Coordinator for Washington County. She's Ms. Loretta Weaver, and she is here to talk to us about Title V, and welcome to New Visions, Ms. Weaver. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And it's nice having you. Uh, what exactly is Title V? We know it's as uh, finance or fun or something, but what is it? Title V is actually a program that tribal organizations or school districts can apply for to help preserve a Pacific culture, and in this case, Indian culture. Mm -hmm. And we received our grant back in 1979, and I've been on board with the program since 1981. Mm -hmm. Why does the Choctaw tribe feel that it is important to teach Choctaw history and culture to their children today? So that the young people will be able to retain their heritage, be proud of it, and will not have to say, I don't know who I am or what I am. I just know that I'm here. But with the Title V program, Indian children can take a new look at themselves they learn about their history, they learn about their culture, they learn about their ancestors and the trials and tribulations that they came through so the, and how they had to handle it so that when they're fa faced with the outside world, they'll know, be better equipped to handle these mm -hmm. situations. Let's go back into the Indian history um, for a, a short period and try and walk it up to, mm -hmm. to now. The, the ancestors had to deny their heritage or deny being an Indian for the sake of their livelihood in past history. Yes. Okay, would you tell us how that started and bring it up to now, today? Uh, I guess the most devastating effect that has affected Native Americans was when in 1824, the Georgia's legis Georgia legislators put into a, an act that it was against the law for an Indian to own land as well as testify against a white man in a court of law. And this started about the actual manipulation of removing all the Indians in the southeast to the Indian Territory, which is now known as the state of Oklahoma. When Andrew Jackson ran for presidency in 1828 and was elected in 1830, his platform was if he would elect, be elected, that he would remove all Indians from the east of the Mississippi to the Western Territory. The lands that were belonged to the Native Americans were divided up in lots, which were placed into a hat. The Georgia's legislators drew these lots out in order to claim them because of the gold and the coal. Mm -hmm. And because of these laws that they enacted, the Native American had no grounds to defend their homes or their families. And they were just rounded up and shipped out. Several people were able, or bands were able, to remain behind. But in doing so, they had to give up their language, their culture, their customs, and their religion in order to make the assimilation into the white man's world. The uh, removal lasted for eight years, from 1831 to 1839, and they moved the five civilized tribes from the eastern, from the uh, southeast to the western territory. And during this time, and those that remained behind could not own their land, so they would have to have overseers to hold their lands in trust for them. 
uh, a white man that they could trust to, to hang on to it to make sure that they could live there. Some of those that did remove were able to make their ways back to this area and establish themselves. But in doing so, they had to assimilate. They couldn't speak their language. They couldn't practice their religion, nor could they practice their customs. So therefore, they did not teach it to their children because they did not want the children to have to go through what they had done. And so if they did not say they were Native Americans, then they would not have these questions arise on. Because even after the removal ceased in 1838, as late as 1847, they were still rounding up bands and moving them out. So it was very unpopular to be an Indian and has been unpopular until this recent decade. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was because they feared removal. Since the Title V program was enacted because the federal government saw that a vast knowledge was disappearing simply because they could not practice it. And it has been very valuable to the United States government in the past because Choctaws were used as code talkers back in World War I. The Navajos were used as code talkers in World War II. And so these were languages that had, were not written down, that could not be uh, broken as a code messages. So a big gap in the American history was taken out because right. of that. Huh? And uh, so when we established our program in 1978, the idea was to bring back into the existence a rebirth of our culture and our heritage. I came on board with the Title V program, which was Title IV at that time, in 1981. And my duties have been to instruct the children in their history, their culture, their language, the arts and crafts, their dances, all the customs that have been suppressed mm -hmm. for many, many years. And this is integrated into the normal public school it's curriculum? It's into the public uh, school curriculum. Mm -hmm. I teach in the morning time at an elementary school, which is a required class for all Indian students. In the afternoon, I teach at the local high school, and it is listed as a history elective for Indian students or non-Indian students if they wish to take it. Are the Indian students interested when they get the, to the high school? Are they still interested in the culture and are they taking the course as an elective? Yes. So the classrooms are full? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, quickly, how much money does the government spend per year in the Title V? Overall or just our program? Well, with your program? 59000 59000 a year. Mm -hmm. Now, is that about the same with every tribe or does it go about how many how large the school system is? Or it's what? how large the school system is and how many students they have. We have to um, submit our 506 forms, which are kind of like CIDB cards, mm -hmm. um, degree of Indian blood. We can run 506 forms on all of our children. Our count, uh, present day count, is 608 children in the Washington County school system. Mm -hmm. Okay, we sure appreciate you coming out and telling us about Title V. And we wish you all the success in the program and hope that the enrollments maintain the large numbers. Uh, that was Ms. Loretta, uh, Loretta Weaver uh, with the Town 5 coordinator in Washington County. And as we take our break, we're going to list a number that you can call if you want more information about Title V. Stay tuned. Up next, we'll tell you about the powwow. That's next on the Visions. talking about the 
Washington County, Mobile County, Choctaw Indians. We just finished talking about the Title V program that is well underway and very important to the Indian tribe. Next, we're going to talk about the powwow that they have annually. This year is scheduled for June the 13th through the 15th. And we've invited, as our guest, to tell us all about it, is the tribal councilman, uh, John Rivers. Welcome to New Vision, Mr. Thank Rivers. Thank you for inviting me. Um, let's, let's get to the beginning of powwow. We've heard a lot of Indian tribes having a powwow, and we think in terms of good times, drinking, you know, and, but it's more to that. Let's, let's give well, us a little history. Really, what the meaning of the word powwow, the Indian have take, has taken a word that, that uh, was used generally by Hollywood and by white men to bring it into something sacred. Uh, powwow to us is a gra gathering of Indian people to reaffirm their religion, their culture, their art, and to educate the public that the Indian is still in America. The word powwow is a Northeastern Indian word that has spread all the United States. As you know, there's several languages in the country that are mm -hmm. spoken by Indians, hundreds of languages. And the word powwow is, is a word that is used by Indians to denote something sacred. Uh, and many people would think of drinking. We have no alcohol. Mm -hmm. We have no drugs. We have, uh, it's a very sacred thing to us. Everything is done very ceremonially, very reverently, and with the utmost respect to our religion and culture. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just talking about uh, maintaining the culture and teaching the kids the history. Uh, in the, during the powwow, everybody is dressed in their culture regalia, regalia, and and even the kids and the grown-ups. And we have some video here of uh, two of the kids uh, that are wearing their. Um, and okay, we can see it there. Would you describe that to us? Yes, uh, the young man is uh, dressed as a traditional dancer, and when I say traditional. His colors are not as bright as what we call fancy dancers, and you'll notice he has on leather leggings. Uh, that's a hawk's foot on that uh, staff he's wearing. The young lady is dressed in a traditional dancer's outfit with the ermine skin on her uh, hair and the beaded crown. And she's one of our little princesses that, mm -hmm. that wins. And she's an excellent student, comes from a very good family. And uh, we're very proud of both of them. They're very dedicated to Indian culture and very dedicated to getting a good education, being good citizens. <laughs> During the powwow, uh, is is this a chance where just your tribe celebrates, or is it uh, tribes from all over Alabama or nationally, or how is that? Well, we have a long history with uh, of Indian education and government. Uh, we were most of our leadership was educated in a college in Muskogee, Oklahoma, specifically for Indians, and. Uh, a powwow is a homecoming and a celebration of your family, and it's a time to educate the people that live around you. So we invite Indians from all of the United States. We'll have probably 20 to 30 different tribes there. Uh, among my tribe alone are married to uh, at least eight or nine different tribes, from the Apache to the, the Creek in Oklahoma to the Paiute in uh, Nevada. So it's really a, a, a festival of Indian cultures. Mm -hmm. When the government placed so many restraints on the Indians because of the value of the land that they were living on mainly, now today it seems like that the government is trying to say, I'm sorry or we're sorry, we're going to make up for this thing and give you the chance to catch up, better yourselves and catch up. And that means giving you money. There was a recent article in the Mobile Press Register that could mean that the Indian tribes are bringing about some bickering among each other for the sake of the funds. Is that true, and how serious is the, that matter? Well, the truth is, is you know, in any government agency, when you there's too few dollars, com people competing for too few dollars. Uh, we've had a problem with uh, with some other uh, groups about uh, participating in the budget. They say that we'll be taking dollars away from them. We'd like to think the budget will be increased, but as I have discussed with some of the leadership of the other group, and that's the Creek Group in Atmore, is it right to cut your brother's throat because you think? that you might lose some money, or is it right for you to help your brother and say, look, we need more money? Mm -hmm. 
So the problem is with that is we are, we are concerned with the divisiveness. We have many supporters in Atmore and among the Porch Creek. That's the group that was in the paper. Mm -hmm. Many friends, many people that support us. It's just that the leadership has a vested interest in trying to promote their position and prevent us from participating in the budget. Well, if you turn it around, and wouldn't you, being a councilman, wouldn't you do whatever you could to get money to make sure that you get the funds for the Choctaw tribe? I would hope, now you say wouldn't I, I would hope that I would be Indian enough, not just the Choctaw, but to speak of a Native American people. I would hope that I would not be selfish enough just to hurt my brother because I was in a position to do that. Uh, the problem is, is that the Indians shouldn't have to compete with each other. This should be fair, the program should be funded properly. But I would hope that I wouldn't do that. Now, I can't say that I, I wouldn't look out for the interest of my people, and I sometimes don't blame people. And I have to say some of the leadership in Ports and the Creeks has done an excellent job looking out for their people. But also, we have helped them in the past. We've helped them when they were weaker and when we were both weak. And now that they're a little bit stronger, they feel like they have the position to hurt us. But I would say this, we have no hard feelings against the Creek people. There's great people in Atmore. We love them. We can't agree with their, their leadership by being selfish and saying that they should get everything and we should get nothing. Why would they say that you shouldn't get it? What is their reasoning for it? Well, that? their reasoning has been, and there's, there's several things. Uh, first, the bureaucracy of the Bureau of Indian Affairs is a bureaucracy designed and used to administer. It was a created to, under, to undertake and observe the demise of the Native American. Mm -hmm. The idea was that the Native American would either assimilate or disappear. That has not happened. A, the, the, because of the isolation of the reservations and the communities, the Native American has still uh, in existence, but the bureaucracy of the Bureau of Indian Affairs uses tribes like the Porch Creeks to fight tribes so they can say, well, we shouldn't have to give them services because uh, they have not been acknowledged to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. A bureaucracy that I, my, in my opinion, was set up to watch the death of Native Americans. Mm -hmm. It has never been anything but that for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at the American taxpayer at a time when Americans are in recession um, and one conservative American <laughs> might say, well, why do we have to pay the money? Why do they have to have any special treatment? Why can't they do like all the rest of the Americans now? We forgive them for what happened and all and why don't they just go to regular public school, get them a job, and live like everybody else, why does it have to be different? Well, I would love to live like everybody else, but in Washington County and surrounding areas of Mobile County, Indians have been discriminated against. Uh, in the chemical plants that located in our area, Indians didn't get a job until 1967. Uh, African Americans were working there in 1953. Uh, this, whether you like it or not, the treaty signed by the United States government and Indian tribes were contracts. Contracts are infinitesimal. They don't run out. Mm -hmm. They signed a contract and said, okay, under Article two, Article 1, Section 3 of the Constitution, we have the right to make treaties with Indian tribes. That's a constitutional thing the Senate has to do. The right that gave them that gave them this beautiful bay, gave them the citronelle oil fields, mm -hmm. gave them the timber that runs up and down the river, gave them the oysters and the shrimp. It gave them all these beautiful things. It gave them that Iron Mountain in Birmingham and and that Mississippi River that goes up and down, in return they said, we'll give you certain things, education, medical services, and economic opportunity. If I had one Italian friend of mine, and I always referred to the Columbus as a lost Italian because he didn't know where he was. Mm -hmm. And an Italian friend of mine asked me one time, said, these treaties, they were signed so long ago. Why should we, why should we honor them? I said, well, it's fine, don't honor them. We'll go back to Italy and give us our land back. <laughs> I said, it's fine. If you want to dishonor all the parts of the treaty, including taking the land, the millions and millions of acres of land, no problem. And if you do that, we'll agree to it. <laughs> Very much well. Okay, the powwow is going to be, I want to give them information on that. It starts June 13th right. at 5 p.m. Right. And that's going to run the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th. We have camping facilities there. People are invited, all races, all nationalities. There's no discrimination at all. We have camper hookups. We have places for you to, to 
to camp. It's a beautiful place. We consider the celebration in our culture and an opportunity to educate the public about the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. And there'll be dances. Dances. Now, uh, you're saying non-Indians can participate in the competition? Is well, the thing about it is the, there are certain societies, the Boy Scouts have set up Indian dance people, and mm -hmm. they're very good. And we allow Boy Scouts, whether they're black, Hispanic, or American Indians, as long as they do it traditionally and follow the tradition, to participate. Indian. OK. Um, we're going to give you the information on the powwow uh, when we go to our break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, for information about the powwow, that number, the correct number is area code 205-829-5500. Area code 205-829-5500. And that also is a good number for any general any information, information about, about the Choctaw right. Indians. Councilman Rivers, thanks a lot for coming down. And Thank you for inviting me. Much success at the powwow. And tell all of our friends in Washington County we say hello. I hope you're okay. welcome. Thank you for watching. watching. Have a safe week, and we'll see you next weekend on New Visions. You have been watching New Visions, a program dedicated to exploring issues of interest to Gulf Coast residents. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please write to New Visions, Post Office Box 1548, Mobile, Alabama, 36633.